Our sermon text for this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor, David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day. May we hear your word. May your word be on our hearts. And may we live your word now and always. Amen. Once upon a time, there was a little boy, and I just happened to know that his name was Bobby. <laughs> And he was sick on Palm Sunday, and so he stayed home from church with his mother. His father returned from church waving a palm branch. The little boy was curious, and so he asked, why do you have that palm branch, Dad? You see, he said, when Jesus came into town, everyone would wave palm branches to honor him, so today we got palm branches. To which the little boy said, I can't believe it. The one Sunday I miss and Jesus shows up. <laughs> Today is Palm Sunday. And it is a day that marks the beginning of Holy Week. On this day, Jesus came to town riding on a colt or a donkey, as other, translation, other translations have it, as we have come to know it. He came riding on a donkey, uh, and he came being celebrated and embraced as the Messiah. Jesus' ministry gives him lots of titles and opportunities to serve in many ways. He was known as a teacher and a healer, a preacher, a scholar, a carpenter, a miracle worker. He was known as a friend, a brother, a son, and the Son of God. Today's scripture lets us come to know Jesus as one of the bravest and most courageous people who ever lived. It is important to see those attributes in our Savior, since we also need to be courageous and brave to be in that right relationship with God. Living a God-centered life is one of the hardest things that we can do. It requires us to make sacrifices, to stand up for what is right. It makes us need to do the right thing, which isn't always the easy thing. 
Our Christian faith makes us stand firm in the face of temptation. It tells us to love and help anyone in need. We are supposed to forgive and show mercy, to turn the other cheek, to turn from our sinful ways, and to turn to Jesus for strength. Jesus had a keen sense of courage in the way that he lived, in the way that he loved, and in the way that he believed in God. That kind of bravery is in full swing during his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. As it is an attribute that we need in our lives, let us look at the courage that Jesus displayed on that Palm Sunday. First of all, Jesus knew that his arrest, his trial, and his death were upon him. He knew this. He also knew that the authorities were looking for him, hoping for an opportunity to place him under arrest. The cautious thing to do would have been to keep a low profile, to enter the city in secret. Instead, he came into the city at a time when the crowds and the religious feelings were the most intense, and he entered Jerusalem in a manner that had every eye focused upon his every move. Staying away, being cautious, keeping a low profile would have been the safer approach, the easier way to handle this situation. But Jesus' courage here is in his ability to do what was right, not what was easy. Sometimes when we are faced with an extremely difficult challenge or a crisis situation, the hardest thing we can do is the right thing. Jesus teaches us that right doesn't always mean easy. It can be the hardest of all. But here we see courage in his commitment to do the right thing no matter what. Second thing to note is that the people had wanted God to send them a Messiah. And they had come to believe that God's Messiah would be this great warrior. One that would destroy all the nation's enemies, wipe out all of their adversaries, deliver the Jewish people from their oppressors, and make them a strong and mighty nation. By entering into Jerusalem on a donkey, he announced to everyone that he was the Messiah. In Zechariah, we read the following, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant! And victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In the east, during this time of Jesus, the donkey was a noble beast. When, the king, when a king entered a city, ready to do battle, he would enter riding upon a horse. But when a king came in peace, he would ride a donkey. You all know the idiom, a picture is worth a thousand words. Jesus is painting a picture here. He is demonstrating exactly what God's messenger was to be. Not a warrior king, but a Messiah who came in peace. A Messiah who would rule in their hearts. A Messiah who would run his kingdom not with brute force, but with love. By riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, Jesus was painting a picture. He was conveying the following message. God, the creator of heaven and earth, is here with you. Your chosen king comes, but he comes in peace. God is not a vindictive, warring God, but a merciful God, full of forgiveness and grace. Jesus on that Palm Sunday had the courage to show the world the love of God. And finally, we see the courage of Jesus displayed when he sends forth his disciples to retrieve the donkey. Verses 2 and 3 today says, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a colt tied up. Untie them and bring it to me. If anyone says anything you, to you, just say, The Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. From my commentary, Feasting on the Word, here is what Charles Campbell has to say. Most of the Palm Sunday story relates the care with which Jesus has made the arrangements for this event. These verses give evidence that Jesus had planned the entire occasion in advance. 
He arranged for the cold and he provided signals for the disciples to use with the people watching the cold. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing, everything carefully orchestrated. Again, from feasting on the word. Now, why would the arrangements and the preconceived signal be an act of courage? Well, there is a courage that is revealed when a person acts on the spur of the moment. When an emergency or a crisis occurs, and when a person sees that their fight or flight instinct kicks in, and they either run away, or they act with great courage and face the danger that is in front of them. An example would be witnessing a car crash and then rushing to the aid of those who may be hurt or trapped inside their vehicles. But there is another form of courage, a higher form of courage, that appears when a person has the time and the clarity of thought to think about their situation. It is one thing to be courageous when dealing with instinctive reactions. It is quite another when one knows what lies ahead, has weighed the options, and who deliberately decides because of a purpose to press on. Jesus had courage because of a higher goal, because of a need to put God first, and because of his ability to trust in God's promise. On that first Palm Sunday, Jesus displayed courage, extreme courage. Courage in doing the right thing. Courage in showing God's love. Courage in trusting God's plan. Now, I've just said the word courage about 14 times in the last two minutes. So, it feels to me that we need to have a story about courage. So, this is a story about a man named Ray Blankenship who was at his home one Saturday morning doing the breakfast dishes and he looks out of his window and he sees a little girl being swept up in a torrent of water outside of his front window. You see there had been a big big storm and all the drainages had flowed over and now all the curbs and the drainage ditches were like a raging river and Ray looked out just in time to see a little girl swept away in that river and she was in big trouble. Now, Ray knew that at the end of all of this there was a culvert or an open sewer system and he didn't want that girl plunging inside. So he runs out of his front window, he tries his best to run ahead of the girl in the water and just as he does, he jumps in to try and save, and save her. He flails his arms about, grabs her hand, pulls her tight, and the two of them go end over end, swept up by the wave that's on their street, and down they go, headed for the open drainage ditch. Ray grabs hold of anything that he can. He feels a rock or something, and he grabs it, and he holds on. And if he can just hold on, till the fire department or till somebody comes and rescues them, then he knows that this girl will be all right. His problem is, is that this is pretty raging water. This is pretty heavy. And he doesn't know if he's going to make it in time. Well, when the fire and rescue team show up, Ray and the girl are sitting safely on the side of the road, out of harm's way. And the ambulance comes and they treat them for shock and make sure that they're okay. In 1989, Ray Blankenship received the Coast Guard Silver Medal of Life Saving for his extreme act of courage that day. And that's the kind of courage that we're talking about. And I'd love to end it here, but I can't, because this is a Paul Harvey story. And so there's something else. Ray Blankenship had courage that day to save that little girl and Ray Blankenship could not even swim. That's the kind of courage that we need to display in our faith life. A courage that gives us the ability to do the right thing. A courage that allows us to go out into this world and show the love of God. A courage that trusts that God is with us and with us always.
The easy part of all of this is the courage is right there in front of us. We have the life and lessons of our Lord and His courage to see us through. And the most, and we don't need it. And we need lots of courage in life, but we don't need any courage to know that God is right there. And God is right with us and will be with us every single day. And so that gives us the courage to move forward. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are ever grateful. Help us to show that gratitude by trusting and loving and doing what is right in your name and for your glory, now and always. Amen. Would you now please stand?